Before we get started, I will be showing some of the bosses and cutscenes in this game. A majority of which will be early game, but nonetheless, a slight warning. So if that's something you don't want to see, feel free to click off. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Now on the 8th of June, a demo for Lies of P was released to the public. And I played it. And I felt dirty. I was like, ew, this feels like I'm wearing fake Jordans right now. I couldn't get over it. I was like, this is so shameless. This is like if they said Bloodborne, but make your ass. So I said, yeah, this is a major skip. However, it came out and people started saying, it's game of the year, it's game of the year. And I was like, ain't no way. I'm looking at it. I'm watching the gameplay. I'm like, whatever happened to Morrows, man, this is a straight clone. But a few people whose opinion I respected told me they liked it. And so would I. So one month later, after some convincing, I said fine, and I went ahead and bought the game, full price. And I'm here to admit, I don't regret buying it. When I sat down to play this game, I'll be honest, I was expecting to hate the game. I was. I'm like, this is a Bloodborne knockoff, and what makes it even worse is the Pinocchio tie-in. Let's take the DNA and identity of a popular game and the intellectual property of Pinocchio, since it's in the public domain now, and mesh them together. But I'm sorry to say, it's so good, I forgot about all of that. This is coming from someone whose first and favorite Souls game is Bloodborne, and it comes across more like a love letter than a cheap knockoff. I'll be doing a lot of comparing to the other Souls games in this video just for reference because basically that's what it is. Bonfires, backstabs, stagger bar, you can only jump while sprinting even, plus a whole lot more. The production value of this game is incredibly high. I was taken aback. I couldn't count how many times I was visually impressed with this game from the locations and scenery to the boss and enemy designs gameplay wise is vastly improved from the demo i didn't think anything they could do would really change how i felt i wasn't sure what it was i disliked people said it was the dodge mechanic and i was like yeah they said they fixed it but was that what i disliked but maybe it was because this went from feeling like a cheap knockoff to genuinely feeling like bloodborne the atmosphere mechanics the gameplay is so close to being one-to-one -to, -one. to bring back the comparison from earlier this is like the rep jordans the ones that are made in the same factory you can't tell but to give it its credit it does have its own spin on certain things for example the way you recover health is slightly different if you use all your health items you get a chance to earn them back by addition that damage which i liked rewarding the aggressive gameplay like bloodborne does you also have to repair your weapons sometimes you'll have to do that mid fight even that mechanic was neither here nor there for me it added some slight depth and there's some skills in the skill tree that flesh it out some more and make it more impactful but for me you could take it or leave it overall this feels like a cross between bloodborne and sekiro the sekiro part just because of its heavy emphasis on parrying. But let's talk about the difficulty. This is the hardest Souls game ever. My complaint with Demon Souls is the bosses only really have one stage and it's too easy. The bosses in this game had me wishing there was only one stage. I was getting cooked. Bosses will have multiple stages in their multiple stages. And if it wasn't for this review, the way I beat some of these bosses, <laughs> I would have taken to the grave. Now without looking like a complete bum, I might even say the game is perhaps a little too hard, but I can't complain because at the same time, I can't say it's unfair. When I died, for the most part, it felt like it was my fault. I just suck at parrying. Another reason is it's partly my own fault. It's self-inflicted. I do not like using summons in these types of games. They're too cheap. They make the game too easy. You end up attacking the back of an enemy. That's all the game turns into. And I feel like a lot of people will rely on the summons as a crutch. And I don't feel like you should get the same credit as someone who beat the game without using them. To be honest, I used them. Now I used them in fights where there was multiple enemies on the screen where I was like, let me even the odds. There's too many of you on screen right now. I'm fighting four different people. You go handle him. 
I handle the rest. So without spoiling it, I did use the summon in those boss fights. I was trying to get to Spider-Man 2 already. I won't lie to you. But I still find that not fair. I don't feel like I should be able to have the same rights as everyone else. Like, yeah, I didn't use them on every boss and I stayed on a few bosses for multiple hours, countless hours on certain bosses. But my playthrough is tainted. But I say this, whereas a game like Elden Ring, in my review I said, I felt like the bosses had no real rhyme or reason, they were kind of manic and not well designed. I felt the opposite here, the bosses have a clear move pattern that you can learn and the more you play, the better you'll get. That's a fact. But when you get to the King of Puppets boss, the game has a ridiculous difficulty spike so be warned. As for the story, this is easily the easiest to follow in all of the Souls games as well. It's not incredible, but it's pretty good. Like, it kept my attention. It has its own original spin on the Pinocchio story. I believe an original spin. I've only seen the Disney movie. If I had to rate the game, I'd say this is an easy 8.5 out of 10. This game is incredible. So that may leave you thinking, well, where does it land in the scale? Is this better than Bloodborne? Let's not get carried away. I saw a few people say that, but I will say, this is the second best Souls game ever made. Above Sekiro, above Elden Ring, and above Demon's Souls. This game is great, and with PlayStation Japan shut down and From Software working on other projects, I would fully entrust these developers with the Bloodborne IP to make a sequel, because they proved themselves. And the next game they make, I will be there, no matter what.